The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. With the coming of evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind to leaving the crowd behind, they took him just as he was in the boat. And there were other boats with him. Then it began to blow a gale, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that it was almost swamped. But he was in the stern, his head on the cushion, asleep. They woke him and said to him, Master, do you not care? We are going down. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet now, be calm. And the wind dropped, and all was calm again. And then he said to them, why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? They were filled with awe and said to one another, Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. So today in the Gospel, we see this story of how Jesus calmed the sea and he stopped the storm, you know, how he saved the apostles and himself too, actually, from the storm. Now, you know, all the Gospel stories that we have, the Gospel writers are actually trying to tell us something about who Jesus is. So usually when we read the Gospels, this is the question that we should have at the back of our minds. Yeah, first and foremost, what is the Gospel writer trying to tell us about who Jesus is? So when you read the Gospels in this way, you can get a lot of understanding actually yeah, about what's going on. Now, what do you think the Gospel writers are trying to tell us today in this story? Now, the first part, we see Jesus and he's fast asleep. And that's their way of telling us that Jesus was 100% human. He's fully human. Now, do you know why he was so tired? He was so tired because he had spent the past few days preaching and people were you know, following him everywhere and he had to heal the sick. He had to cast out demons. He had to preach the good news. So he was really tired. And we know that sometimes when he saw his apostles tired, he would send them away and say, you all go and rest now. And he would take up the burden and attend to the crowd and disperse the crowd, send them off. And we also know Jesus has the habit at nighttime going up mountains and praying. Now imagine you're doing all of that. Wouldn't you be exhausted? So Jesus really, he is at the point of exhaustion, such that he is in a boat that's being tossed up and down by the waves, water coming in, there's a gale, the sound of the wind, a fierce wind, a terrible storm, and he is literally dead to the world. He's asleep, and he doesn't stir. So definitely Jesus is not a light sleeper, and we can see he was exhausted. Yeah? So you might experience this sometimes when you're really exhausted and you set your alarm clock to wake you up and you get up one hour later and you say, my alarm clock didn't ring. <laughs> it rang, my dear. But you were dead to the world. Yeah? It happens to me sometimes too. Hmm? And yeah, for that reason, the priest might appear late for Mass. He was one of those early morning Masses. Yeah? Okay. So that part tells us about the humanity of Jesus. Yeah, he is 100% human, fully human. This is what we believe. Yeah? Now, but that's not the end of the story. We also believe that he is 100% divine. He is fully divine. He is the son of God. He's not just any prophet. And we see he has the power to stop the storm. He has the power to command the sea and the winds, which is what the first reading told us only God can do. And that's the gospel writer's way of telling us that Jesus was fully divine. 
Now, not that they made up this story, it definitely happened and they remembered and so they recount it to us as one of the moments when they realized that Jesus was divine. So from there we know he is fully human, he is fully divine. We believe in his humanity, we also believe in his divinity. And as you can see, he commands the sea, you know, quiet now, be calm. You do not see Jesus lifting up his eyes to heaven, praying to his father, none of that. You know, some will say, no, he is working this miracle. Actually, God is working the miracle. He is the prophet praying and asking for the miracle. No, he commands the sea himself with the authority and the power of his divinity. So this is our faith. We believe Jesus fully human, fully divine, the son of God, yeah, incarnate. All right. Now, so that's the part of the theological part for us to uh, be informed about today in our faith. So don't believe anybody who says Jesus was only a human being, a great human being, only that he was. Don't believe somebody else who also says he was not a human, you know. That's why he could do all the extraordinary things. Yeah, he was only God, only. There are some who will say that also. See, that's why Jesus could do this. Jesus could do that. After all, he was God. We might like to say that, you know. And then we excuse ourselves from our human responsibility of following the example of Jesus because we say he could do it because he was also God. But he was doing many human things in an extraordinary way because he was an extraordinary human being. And you, my dear brothers and sisters, in the fullness of your humanity, with the cooperation that you give to God's grace acting in your life, moving by the Holy Spirit, you too can do great things without being fully divine. Hmm? So remember, anyone who denies the divinity, he is not a Christian, not a follower of Christ. Anyone who denies the humanity of Christ, he is also misleading you. Both, we believe, fully human, fully divine. So this is important for us. This is our faith. All right. Now let us reflect a little bit more on this uh, whole gospel passage. And maybe we want to look at the apostles now. The apostles, they were frightened. They were fishermen, many of them, not all, but those who were even, they would have been frightened because every storm is frightening. They were at risk of losing their life. So it's normal for them to be afraid. And you know, they were really exasperated at the fact that Jesus was still sleeping. And that's why they tell him, you know, don't you care? Master, do you not care? We are going down. And you know, sometimes that might also be how we feel in our own life. We may not be in a literal storm, but there are many storms that come and go in our life. And maybe some of us here now, even at the present stage of where you are in your life, you may be navigating through a very stormy period. And during this time, naturally, you will be calling out to God, you will be calling out to Jesus, please save me, please help me. And you might find that he is still sleeping. <laughs> and you are fighting against the storm still. So now, what must you do? Continue to call upon Jesus. Continue to pray. Continue to seek divine assistance. Continue to ask God for help. Don't give up and don't lose faith. There will come a moment when the sleeping Jesus will wake up and at the point where really you cannot handle anymore, he will assist you in a way that you may not expect. However, one thing you must remember, in fact, if you have been fighting through the storms, apparently without God's help, it's not true. Everything you are doing, in fact, to survive, you are doing it with the help of God. It's just that you don't realize it. And maybe the help is coming in a way that you don't expect it. You may not even see it. But if you are still standing, you are still fighting, and you are still soldiering on, know that it is only because God is actually lifting you up. Your troubles may not have come to an end. The storm may not have yet stopped. And so it seems as though you are abandoned. It seems as though you are without assistance, but there could be nothing further from the truth than this. God never abandons us. He is with us at every moment, 
even when he is with us as the sleeping Jesus. Yeah, sleeping in the boat of your storms. Okay, now let's look at the question of Jesus, or rather, yeah, of Jesus to the apostles. He asked them, why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? Was it wrong for the apostles to be frightened? No, it was not. So maybe Jesus is hinting at something else. And what is that? They were frightened of Jesus, maybe. Seeing him calm the storm, doing something that you would not expect any human being to do. And you know, the Jews, the Israelites, they are very frightened of God, actually. They are very frightened of any manifestation of God. Even the angel of God, they are frightened. Because in their belief system, if they have seen God, they will die. But we know that is not true, in fact. They will see God and they will still live. But they will be willing to die for God, yes. So it's possible that Jesus is actually asking them, after all the people you have seen me heal, after all the demons I have cast out, after all the things I have been doing, still you are so surprised I could calm the storm. How is it you have been with me all this while and still you have not realized that I am the Lord your God? So anyhow, we see that they are filled with awe and they continue to say, who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. So their faith in Jesus is not full yet. They have not been able to fully accept what I was trying to teach you at the beginning of this sermon, that Jesus is fully human, but he is also fully divine. He is the Son of God incarnate. And that's something that the apostles will have to slowly grow and mature in their faith to the point when they will fully acknowledge that he is the Lord, their God. Okay, So their faith is still not complete. And perhaps this is what he might have been referring to more so than their fear of the storm, which is something very natural. Other possibility, of course, they really thought Jesus was going to let them sink. <laughs> and they were thinking this is a useless master. <laughs> Maybe he was rebuking them for that, also possible. Okay. Now, you know, I was reflecting on this gospel and I thought to myself, who can I be in this gospel? You know, one way of meditating is you place yourself in the gospel scene and you can place yourself in the shoes of Jesus looking at the apostles. Okay, most of us wouldn't do that, I think, but maybe you can to see how would Jesus react to them. You might want to say, I'm like one of the apostles and I'm fighting this big storm in my life now. And yes, Jesus is sleeping in my boat. But you know, I thought about it yesterday. Yeah, just yesterday the thought came to me as I reflected on this gospel, as I was eating my lunch. What if I am the storm? Have you ever thought of putting yourself into the gospel story as the storm. What if it is I who is tossing the waves up and down in the life of my family, in the life of my BEC, in the life of my parish community, in the life of my workplace, whatever it is. I am the storm that is really causing a ruckus. Like a tornado, I am going all over the place. And of course, maybe I think, yes, my life is full of storms, but maybe I am the storm. Now that's something we could reflect upon also. It's very common that we will think that everybody else is the storm, but what about me? Maybe I am the storm. And if you are, then humbly submit to our Lord Jesus when he tells you, quiet now, be calm, stop this havoc that you are causing in the life of everybody. If suddenly you realize you're the storm, please don't storm out of the church. Eh? Father is not scolding you. <laughs> but I'm telling you, bow down before the power of God. And offer yourself to God and say, I would like to be your storm. 
You know how powerful a storm is, full of energy, vibrant. We may look at it as a destructive force, but that vitality that you have as that storm that is going around, give that vitality to God and say, I want you to be the Lord of the storm who is me. I want you to be my Lord and Master. And I want to be at your service. You know, sometimes people, they are, some people are very energetic, some are very hard to control, some people are very rebellious. They have a fire burning in them which we are trying to contain because it's like, wow, burning up everybody. But perhaps we have misunderstood them. They have a potentiality that is yet to be tapped, that is yet to be harnessed, that is yet to be directed in the right direction, that is yet to be under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Think of Pentecost, the wind that was blowing, the sound of the wind and the tongues of fire falling on the apostles. Imagine if instead of being the storm that was trying to capsize the boat, you are that sound of that wind in the cenacle, in the upper room where the twelve apostles were with Mother Mary, and you are the tongues of fire falling upon them. An anointed person, a man of God, he is that. And he brings with him the power of God, and he brings with him the power also to change things, and he brings with him a better future. And this is what we pray, even for our children, that they will give their lives to God and allow our Lord Jesus to be the Lord of their life. When they do that, they will realize their full potential as a human being. They will be that extraordinary human being, fully human and really extraordinary. And that is what we should wish also for our children and for ourselves, to be under the direction of God. So my dear brothers and sisters today, let us not be afraid of the storm. And if we are the storm, let us give ourselves to God. And I would like to end this homily with the first line of the second reading. And what was the first line of the second reading? Just a few words it said, Overwhelmed with the love of Christ. Somebody who is overwhelmed with the love of Christ, that person will be really powerful. Powerful in what sense? He will be an instrument of God's love. Remember how Jesus said, don't think I came to bring peace. I came to bring, what did he say? Fire upon earth and how I wish it was burning already. What fire? The fire of God's love. So pray that that is what we will be once we are transformed in Christ. Once we are overwhelmed with the love of Christ. And once we acknowledge that Jesus is truly our Lord and Master.